As far as power sector crisis is concerned, raising power tariff has never been a solution. It is not a solution and it will never be a solution. What should then we do? We need energy reform, not only power tariff hike. This is just like a tax rate. If we keep on increasing tax rate, people will avoid paying taxes. If you keep on raising power tariff, people will avoid paying power, power bill. Very simple. You don't have to be a genius to understand this. So what is required is, these are four things which I have suggested that we should be doing. Energy audit. There are many power plants which have become a fuel guzzler. With same unit of fuel, we are producing one unit, we could produce three units. Because the machine has become fuel guzzler. Identify those machines, those power plants who have become a fuel guzzlers and make a targeted investment to improve their efficiency. Elimination of free electricity to Vobda and Pepco employees. This is a major source of power theft. If I am a Vobda employee, I have given 10 houses on my right hand side and 10 houses on my left hand side connections. And I have made an arrangement with them, 2,000 rupees each. Now, if my neighbors are getting a connection from my house, he will cook his food not through gas, but electricity. Imagine the amount of power theft which is taking place. Close this gap. In 1998, when I landed in Ministry of Finance in March 1998, I did some back of the envelope calculation and at that time, at that price, the theft was to the extent of 10 billion rupees per annum. Imagine today how much theft is going on in today's price. Performance-based appointment and discourse, distribution companies. There is no performance criteria. Appoint a CEO, give him a target that today your line losses and power theft is 27 to 28%. In next three years, this is your appointment time, it must come down to 22-23%. And we will be monitoring your progress. When there is no target given to anybody, why should that person be so efficient to manage the electricity in this country? So, performance-based appointment in discourse and a strengthening of WAPDA's finance department. This is Thaka of the highest order finance department. I have dealt with this organization for 11 years. If you ask them at 10 a.m. in the, what is your sale proceed, WAPDA's sale proceed, you will get one number. If you ask the same person at 3 p.m., he will give you another number. If you ask his colleagues sitting in the same department, they will give you another number. So at one moment in time, there are 10 numbers of Abdas finances, which should be believed. It was a kind of getting heart attack every time in the month of May when we used to prepare our national accounts. So we need to strengthen Abdas finance department. Impose binding constraints on the part of the provincial government to generate targeted surplus and save the NFC award. I am glad that IMF has also accepted my advice and in the Article 4 consultation report of, which was released on February 2012, they said that this is, the, this is one of the solutions. And that is why I am saying that we need to address the NFC award, otherwise there will be no meaningful fiscal policy in the country. So let me conclude my presentation. We have serious challenges for the economy in the next two years. There, there is no doubt in my mind. But these issues are not uns unsurmountable. It can be addressed, provided we have a good leadership. And these challenges can be addressed in a three years framework. And we need a strong economic team. And as I stated, there is no dearth of good people in this country. So what we require is honest, competent, and patriotic leadership, providing full support to economic team. 
We have the capacity to turn around the economy in three years. The country has faced serious difficulties in the past and recovered also. We have the capacity to recover from the ground zero once again, inshallah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Ashfaq Hassan Khan. And I'd now like to call on Yusuf Adil, the chairman of Deloitte, Pakistan, to please present a plaque to um, our distinguished speaker here in appreciation of uh, his good words. And indeed, a, a tremendous wake-up call, I think, to us all, really laying out, uh, giving us a bit of a history lesson in terms of where we came from, um, highlighting the good points and the bad points, and um, giving a, a very cautionary warning out there, I think, too, in terms of what needs to be done. Um, we do have a plaque, and uh, thank you so much, Mr. Ashfaq Hassan Khan, for that very, very enlightening, indeed, uh, energizing start to the day. We may have seen a bit of doom and gloom, but um, he was also one to, to bring some good solutions to us and really tell us we have to uh, shape up in the next three years. So thank you for laying out that challenge. And to Mr. Yusuf Adil, thank you so much for joining us.